Dear friend, thank you for uh, coming early in the morning, starting a day that I think would, and I hope will be packed with people and great topics. I'd like to thank uh, our partner, uh, DNB, for doing this event with us again. I, did, I think we lost count. Uh, so it's a good thing. We've been partners for a long time. And thank you to you and your team for helping with the uh, heavy lifting. I think it's going to be a great event. We have a lot of people coming. And thank you to you especially for being brave enough to uh, start the day with us. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we've, we've got a good, a good group to start the day. Uh, so on behalf of DNB and Capital Link, welcome all to uh, this 15th annual New York Maritime Forum. That's a notable anniversary, Nicholas. Congratulations on that. Uh, and many thanks for your uh, tireless and continuing efforts to promote the international shipping industry, something that's near and dear to our hearts. Uh, we at DNB are proud to be a key partner uh, in, your, in your efforts. Just a few brief remarks. I think, I think I make my remarks briefer every time I give them, just so we can get rolling. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the theme of today's forum is positioning for long-term competitiveness. Now, I think the industry has made a great deal of progress in the last several years, and possibly more, moving in this direction. Uh, most notably, uh, strengthening its collective financial position to the most robust level that I have seen in my career, uh, being severely tested operationally, and successfully navigating a global pandemic, and not the least beginning its decarbonization journey. Um, which is likely to be the most defining and challenging process the industry has faced in its long history. Indeed, the critical challenge of achieving the industry's regulated decarbonization mandates is in today's reality the key to shipping's long-term competitiveness and indeed viability, you could say, its license to operate. The regulatory complexity around this issue is only accelerating. And yet the solutions to address the challenge, by and large, remain only in a very early development stage. And as we all know, these are solutions that the industry cannot develop on its own, but rather require a collective effort from many stakeholders across a very complex value chain. We know what they are, the development of commercially viable alternative fuels, associated infrastructure distribution networks, new vessel engine designs, availability of capital, and not the least a uniform global regulatory framework under which to operate. And there's probably more. You can throw into the mix of challenges in the near to medium term the additional headwinds of a noticeably slowing global economy and higher for longer interest rates. Less ex existential challenges, perhaps, but clearly factors that will result in additional uncertainty around investment decisions for the time being. The world uh, that we live in has been turned on its head in these last 21 months. Energy security has emerged as a new and powerful imperative, absolutely competing with the energy transition for the hearts and minds of both policymakers and the man on the street. Both physical and paper markets are currently being pulled in opposite directions by these two megatrends. We have seen the investment thesis for renewables relative to traditional fossil fuel related activities turn 180 degrees since February 2022. The former is now more or less uninvestable. The latter is all the rage. And the tension between these two drivers, unfortunately, appears to be increasingly exacerbated by political rhetoric as we see the rise of political populism in the West and an evident divide in the views and priorities of developed and emerging countries, fueled in large part by concerns around the costs involved in paying for our energy future and who should bear those costs against the backdrop of increasingly large fiscal deficits and significantly higher interest rates. I very much doubt that the current situation the industry faces, both on the micro and the macro level, is going to be alleviated uh, anytime soon. And ship owners, to a very large extent, are caught in the crosshairs. So aside from strong balance sheets 
shareholders made happy by increasingly consistent returns of capital and robust operating and tech technical management platforms. What else can the leaders of the industry be doing to, possess, to best position themselves and their companies for the long term? We've got a bunch of them here today. Let's listen and hear what they have to say. Thank you. <laughs>